welcome back to another week of Doc Talks. And today we're talking about something that actually we probably see more than almost anything else uh, in terms of uh, patient care um, and the people that we work with is uh, returning to an activity that they love but has been their downfall or their pain. Some, something happened during that time and they can't do that thing that they love. Um, that's our biggest. One of our biggest complaints of, hey, this is my goal, this is what I want to do, I can't do it because it's causing significant pain. Yep, maybe you're a runner, and the old joke, as a former runner, I can say this, is you're either training or you're hurt. Um, there's no ifs, ands, or buts, so no, how do you get back to running? But it could also be something as simple as, hey, you know, docs, I, I hurt myself doing the dishes, and I can only do dishes for a couple minutes at a time. I'm, if I do anything longer than I pay for it. How do you problem solve through those issues? Well, if only there were two docs who could help you problem solve through those issues. Do you have a patient that says they like to do dishes? No, I never do. But I, well, I always make the joke like, well, I mean, dishes are terrible. So I'm doing you a favor by not treating you yeah. so you can't do exactly, dishes. Exactly, exactly. So, but if by some chance you want to do dishes, we're, we're here to help you. All right, uh, did you, were you looking at that like one something real quick? No, you're good. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, the topic, why does it hurt when you start to try to do these things again? Um, there's a bunch of reasons why. Uh, we'll go over a couple of topics. Um, right off the bat, looking at, uh, looking at the body and anatomy, if there is something that gets hurt, say there's actual tissue damage, um, whether it's ligament, tendon, you can name all the, the stuff that's in the body. Tissue has to be built back up once it's been damaged. And a lot of people don't take the time to humble themselves. They want to get right back to where they were. So they think of uh, step seven as opposed to looking at step one. They're like, how do I get to step seven as quickly as possible or to whatever activity it is? They try to go maybe one or two notches down when really they need to bump it down a decent amount because that tissue's been significantly damaged, you've taken a lot of time off, um, and you maybe have forgotten maybe the, the better strategies that you had before. Um, so those are all things to consider when you're starting to build up this, what we call tolerance. Yeah, and especially if you've had to lay off for an extended period of time. I mean, think about how it feels when you get back into the gym after a long layoff, or if you haven't done any physical activity. Like COVID? Like, yeah, COVID. I mean, how awful did you feel for those really? first moments you stepped into the gym? It's like, oh, it's like I, you know, I've lost everything. The same thing happens to your tissues, is if you're not moving an area for an extended period of time, the, the tissues get out of shape, or as we would call deconditioned. And many times, if just like you get sore from a workout after a long layoff, your tissues can get sore, uncomfortable, after doing an activity that was painful. So it's not uncommon to have pain associated with that. And it's not necessarily that you damaged anything, but it's just that the tissues in your body, muscles, joints, connective tissue, aren't prepared to tolerate whatever activity you were trying to do at the levels you were doing before. Yeah, yep. I mean, building up that tolerance is, or just having that understanding that to tolerance needs to be uh, reclaimed gradually uh, and it doesn't it doesn't just happen it doesn't once you see pain maybe diminish and you're not doing the activity that caused the pain that doesn't mean that you're gonna be pain free for, for that activity as well um, because again you know that probably is taking a little bit more load a little bit more uh, strategy a little bit more uh, conditioning like uh, that Dr. Couples is saying um, if we can get that to gradually bump up, then we'll hopefully have more resilience, more tolerance. Um, that leads us to uh, maybe the next point of sensitivity. Uh, if tissues become sensitive, they maybe you've tried to ramp this up multiple times. Uh, you've gone to the golf course and you keep, you keep on going to a driver and you're like, oh, it hurts again, oh, it hurts again, oh, it hurts again. Well, maybe, just maybe, we've caused these tissues to be pretty sensitive to that movement and we, again, have to, to figure out how to, to expose those, maybe just a, a little bit at a time, but those tissues become sensitive to that movement. It, it, it now remembers that type of uh, uh, pain and now we have this 
this system in our body, and it's a good system. It is, it's a really good system, but we have to know how to manipulate the system a little bit. The system of, when we do this movement, our body's gonna say, hey, you hurt yourself doing this before, it's, take it easy. Um, it's, like, it's an alarm system, um, and it's really good. It's really good at what it, it does, uh, but at the same time, we have to know that sometimes our body can overprotect or it can kind of give us these, sig these signals of, hey, dummy, don't do this thing again, when really, it's given that it's been given the amount of time to rest, but now we just need to graduate into it slowly. Yeah, and in, in order to, to better understand this, we have to talk a little bit about pain and how that's not necessarily always correlated, correlative with tissue injury. I'll give you an example. Let's say, you know, casinos open up, you go out with your peeps, you party way too hard, and then you wake up the next morning and you got a major headache. This hurts awful. Assuming you didn't, you know, have a head injury while you were out partying on the strip, what tissue did you damage? Well, the answer is there was no, no damage to your head. It's just that your body has experienced some type of threatening stimulus, too much alcohol, and pain is there as a measure to protect you from making the same mistake twice having the hair of the dog and doing the same, you know, <laughs> wild and crazy things you did the night before. It's not uncommon for that to happen after you sustained an injury with, with an activity. And, and think of it this way, it's because your body is really good about ensuring you don't do that again, many times you will experience pain well before you get to the, the point where you injure the tissues that you injured previously. It's, it's like a smoke alarm. So ideally, smoke alarm should go off when there's a fire. But we all have that time where your smoke alarm goes off when you're just cooking eggs in the morning. Think of your situation as your smoke alarm is more predisposed to going off when the eggs when the eggs are cooked. Yeah, your sensitivity is just turned up to a million degrees. Yeah, so what we have to do is we have to, and we'll talk about how to do this, but we have to teach our bodies to tolerate some of these things that we're putting it through, whether it's running, whether it's you know bending forward to pick stuff up, anything, in a manner that doesn't set off that alarm so much. So then your body gets used to those movements, you get used to those movements, and you can return back to those activities at the levels you so desire. Yeah, it's great. Uh, it's really, really good to, to go over that because a lot of uh, patients that I and uh, Dr. Couples work with are very fearful of those those things that they did previously. You know that that's that's very very scary to get back into something that has caused them so much pain in the past. But they really want to get that done, um, and that can halt uh, progress long term too. You know, I, there's been patients that that have told me over the years they haven't done this movement for you know five years because one they were maybe told by someone that oh. Well, hurt yourself you probably shouldn't do that again or they, they've had the self-talk of well you remember when you did that you shouldn't do that again um, you know we definitely got to break those those fear patterns as quickly as we possibly can um, and uh, when we're talking about do you, uh, you want to go acute yeah let's go the other the other time that you can have an issue when you ramp up with a particular activity is if you're feeling good and then you start to push yourself. You do too much too soon. What happens in that case is if you have a spike in your workload, so you, you do too much well beyond what your tissues are conditioned to tolerate, a lot of times pain or even swelling, inflammation can be produced as a protective measure so your body tells you, hey, you shouldn't do that to the extent that you did before. I, I keep using drinking analogies because they're gonna think I'm an alcoholic. But <laughs> Consider, consider this, this is a useful analogy. Let's say that you haven't drank much alcohol for a, a, a while. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's that night where you go out to the strip and you party with your peeps. And you have five drinks more than you normally would. You're not going to feel so great. You would have felt better if you were used to having more drinks for a longer period of time. 
no, we are not condoning drinking that much on a regular basis. But that's how you build tolerance to alcohol. And we have to think of it the same way with physical activity. If you're talking about the example that you talked about where you've avoided an exercise or some type of activity for five years, and you go back to doing that activity, even in small amounts, you might get a hangover from that activity. Absolutely. And I have, I have this, this is the worst. It's like, you ever have a, a patient who says, hey, Dr. Booth, uh, I went hiking for three hours over the weekend and I just feel awful, all my pain's back and it's worse. And then what do you ask them? Well, what's the most that you've hiked before that? How long do you hike three hours? Yeah, and, and usually it's like, uh, that was my first hike ever, you know what I mean, or something yeah. like that. So in that case, of course you hurt. Like anyone would hurt if because their body isn't prepared to do that because they did too much too soon. So we're gonna teach you ways to ramp up your activity in a safe manner so that doesn't happen. Yeah, uh, to add on to that, just thinking of a patient really, really recent, uh, pickleballer. Mm, it's getting pretty, great, pretty great. intense around here. Um, pickleballer, she had hip pain. Um, she did amazing, first week of treatment. Had an initial consult, saw her at the end of the week. Uh, to follow up at the end of that week she was like doc I feel like I feel great I feel like 90 95 percent and me forgetting to talk about tolerance and some of this stuff uh, didn't tell her okay well it's not just about pain you know we got to make sure that we introduce pickleball uh, back a little bit slow she goes out and takes a lesson uh, gets into a competition and end up playing for uh, I think around two hours of pickleball and that's a lot like just going straight pickleball for two hours for her she's like I never do that um, comes back on the following week and she's like doc I don't know what happened uh, I thought I was doing great and I you know completely went back the opposite way and I shook my head at myself knowing that I should have told her you know like Let's go in small increments. Maybe the, the introduction should have been, you know, 15 or 20 minutes of moving moving around and testing the, the hip out again. And guess what we did that, that week? We did exactly that. We had multiple success uh, bouts of 15, 20 minutes, go out on the court, almost warm up, see how your hip feels, and then shut it down. And then she had multiple times where she did that. And then, bam, what do you know? The end of the week and, and going into the following week, I got to see her and she's like, Okay, this is this is I'm getting back to 100%, um, and I'm actually stressing myself with a, a decent amount of pickleball. So, um, again, going through that thought process of not just step 10, you go through all the steps, make sure that you have a little bit of humbling moment if you've gone through a little bit of irritation on your tissues. Um, very very important, um, and that kind of leads us into uh, this this term uh, that's called graded exposure. So when we, when we think about uh, the body, we want to let the tissues be exposed to little amounts of stress, and then we overcome that. We, we kind of uh, see how our body tolerates it. Um, I don't know about you, but uh, most of the time when I, when I tell patients, hey, look, we need to be below this pain score, which is typically around a three or a four, and then it's all dependent on how how sensitive they are to pain and what their pain scale is. Uh, but it needs to be below this for you to feel like it was a success um, for your, your stress, whatever it is. So if, if I told this patient, let's, let's call her Carol, uh, you need to go out and play uh, pickleball and have nothing more than a three or a four out of 10 and you're gonna have you know, 15, 20 minutes of actual you know, getting around and moving. Then she has good parameters. She has she has understanding of okay, it needs to be below this, and she can grade herself. Um, and then uh, she knows a time frame, you know, a very very low time frame, so her cutoff point. That would have been a much better uh, route for me to go, mm -hmm. um, and she would have better guidelines. And that's exactly what we did on the next week. But yeah, um, yeah, and I I think that's very reasonable. I would also follow up with say. A lot of times this will happen with people too. They'll do an activity and they'll feel amazing, but then the next day or worst case week, they pay for it. So if you have some pain, discomfort, soreness that happens after the fact, the next day, 
That's, that's, that's totally normal. We generally, I'm okay with if you have some soreness, discomfort for, you know, 24 to at the most probably 72 hours. But if you do something and then you are laid up in bed for a week's time, that was beyond what your body's capable of currently at this point. And a lot of times, it doesn't mean that it's not what you are conditioning is physically capable of, but it's what your, your pain system and your sensitivity, sensitivity system is capable of tolerating. So a lot of times, the amount of activity that you'll do will be significantly less than what you're accustomed to. I've had some people where, like if it was sitting, you know, they're sitting at their computer typing, five minutes at a time. And it's like, well, Zach, I can't get anything done. It's like, well, you can't get anything done either when you're hurting yeah. and you're laid up in bed. So you have to start pretty small sometimes. And that doesn't mean you're stuck at that forever, mm -hmm. but you want to find an amount of activity or a duration that you can do that doesn't set off your pain levels too high and also doesn't leave you sore and under and spending time recovering for an extended period of time because then your body doesn't get a chance to adapt. You need frequent bouts of the activity, whether it's pickleball or sitting or anything, in order for your body to adapt to that stimulus. Yeah, and, and getting, a, getting a grade or a baseline is really important because uh, he said, you know, if it's ramped up for, you know, 72 hours and it's way past your initial pain, that means you probably stressed it quite a bit and your body didn't really like that, didn't accept that uh, very well. But if it gets back down to uh, either like your, your baseline or even lower, that's, some, that's your body saying, you know what, I can take, I can take that, I can handle that, I can, get, I can get back down to that baseline pain uh, pretty quickly. Um, so it's all about figuring out where, that, where on that spectrum that activity makes you. Um, and then, and then, kind of manipulating how much time and load and intensity uh, you need for that stuff. Um, this is uh, one of the the golden rules, especially for uh, runners. They always they always seem to understand this. Whether they actually do it is uh, something that can be questioned. But it's the ten percent rule. Um, so, adding ten percent of intensity, load, mileage at a time and then seeing yourself succeed with that over a couple of, uh, of periods or a couple of events of you doing it, uh, that's a really good way. So uh, say we're, we're wanting to, we'll use the runner as an example, they, they can successfully run a half a mile right now without having significant pain. Okay, so now they have half a mile, what will they have maybe after two or three runs, maybe let's say another week. So we go 10% onto that and then we're, su we're successful for that week at 10% more than half a mile. And then we keep on adding and adding and adding. It doesn't have to be uh, super precise. You don't have to go to the, to the step and stop, but around 10% increase or 10% uh, uh, increase in intensity. Um, that could also be something that you change. So it's not just mileage. It could be you know inclines, declines. It could be all sorts of stuff that happens with running. Um, but somehow it's just a 10%, so a small increase. Have one win that week of increasing your intensity, your mileage, your load, whatever it is, and then you can keep on stacking those wins as long as you like, get back to a baseline. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's, that's great. Um, in terms of break, breaking the fear of movement slowly, so a lot of times we get patients who they don't want to to push themselves too far either because that's also not an issue because they're afraid that it's going to hurt. And if we if we go back to what we discussed before, pain doesn't necessarily mean that you're injuring yourself. So if you feel even a little bit of pain or discomfort during an activity, that's not necessarily a bad thing. But I think we also get too that pain is not fun. It's it's uncomfortable. We don't wanna we don't want to feel that and that's totally normal and understandable. So what I encourage those folks to do is think of pain as a house. Not like the Tyler Perry movie, but pain house, right? If you're gonna, you want to knock on the door, so you can go ahead and go to the point where you get a little bit of discomfort and then back away. 
that's generally a good way to bump up your, your pain tolerance. Because if you do that enough, then you'll be able to do more activities before uh, you know, setting yourself off into a flare-up or, or discomfort. But if you break through the door, that's not necessarily a desirable thing because then you can get laid up for too long and then you get deconditioned. But you also don't want to play on the lawn either because then your body never adapts. It's just like going in the weight room. You want to get a heavier squat. You can't just squat your 26 pound kettlebell for the next four years. Eventually you need to go up in weight. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. So it's the same principle here when we're talking about returning to painful activities. Yeah. Um, the, the last kind of topic on this graded exposure is um, looking at our bodies, kind of it can remember pain though too. Um, so uh, there's a pretty popular guy who talks a lot about pain and in his presentation he talks about walking through a field and he steps over a bush and he feels a very very mild pinch at his at his ankle and he's like oh whatever he keeps on keeps on going on his hike at that point he was bit by a snake and he didn't know that it was going to be as bad as it was but he ends up almost losing his life um, he had something that I forgot the name of the snake or whatever it was but so, some type of brown snake and he yeah, was wearing was, a sarong yes <laughs> um, so he gets this this bite and he remembers this whole traumatic event because it, he almost lost his life because of this teeny little little uh, poke into his skin with the you know fangs of the, of the snake recovers still doing well he goes on another hike later on in his life and he's stepping over a bush and he feels a little bit of a pinch his alarm system goes berserk he's like on the ground holding his leg oh my gosh and come to find out it's this little sticker that's in his sock or something like something just really really ridiculous that caused a little bit of a poke and what happened like he, his his body remembered how traumatic that that event was so um, knowing that there's that there can be this big ramp up of pain and it doesn't have to do with the actual tissue damage um, is very important for us to understand as we get back into these these movements because um, our body is very good at remembering it's called a neuro tag most of the time but um, these tags can be uh, protective but they can also be very very they can inhibit your progress to getting back into whatever it is that you want to do um, but that's a really good concept to understand is there can be something that really impacts your life and then your body remembers it and it'll take it with you until you can prove to yourself that you can get over that, you know, and that's what he had to do. He kind of went back on walks and he, you know, he did all sorts of stuff and he didn't shy away from hiking by any means, but um, he was able to get back into it. Um, so that's, that's big. You got to put yourself in those uncomfortable situations. And uh, the more you do that, the more you get used to that. And then that's how you get back to activity. Yeah. That's why, that's why Kyle seems very calm around me because I make him, I made him uncomfortable before this, but he hangs around me enough <laughs> That, that he feels he feels good about being in the same room until we start doing exercises. Yeah, yeah. Then it's yeah. Then I'm getting uncomfortable yeah. real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you want to talk about slow cook? Let's slow do cook it. We got slow cook the brisket. So, uh, recovering from this, it is filled with highs and lows. You will not always have this upward trajectory of oh I ran you know. I did the 10% rule and I started small and my fear of movement is better and I bumped up my mileage to 30 miles a week and all of a sudden I did 35 and then oh, I'm back to normal. And that doesn't mean that you failed, but it's not uncommon to have these highs and lows in your recovery process, just like life. Life isn't always puppies and rainbows. <laughs> um, so realize that that's okay. Keep going at a, at a good pace. Um, you will eventually progress through that over time and when you have those flare-ups when you have those those lows It's important to not completely stop Activity you want to make sure that you're still moving as much as you can within a within the guidelines that we discussed before yes. and, uh, and, and and Just progress yourself that way. So if you got it, you know, you you hit a time period where you're 
sore or uncomfortable for a week. Uh, make sure that if it's running, you're still running as much as you can, or maybe you cross train with aqua jogging, or yeah. you're doing, you're working with you know, trainers like we have here at Elevate. Anything that you can do that maintains your tissue conditioning levels, and then don't be afraid to get back into the activity sooner rather than later. I've had this a lot where I've seen some people post op, and uh, I would take them through step ups if they had like a knee surgery. And maybe on Monday, you know, despite coaching the snot out of it, <laughs> couldn't get it to change. And it just hurt. So I said, okay, well, let's stop. Let's try that again the next time you come in. A few days later, we tried it, and it was okay. Yeah. So the same thing can happen with you if you hit a low. So don't be afraid to keep trying, keep persisting through this, and you will get better. Yeah, it's definitely a mindset, you know, and, and I think the people that do well with uh, care that we provide are the people that have very strong mindsets and they have determined to get back into the, the things that they want to do because they'll keep trying and they'll keep trying and they'll keep trying until, you know, healthcare is, it's never, it's never linear. It's never like, oh, we got this and it's never going to come back again. You know, there's always going to be little blips and stuff like that, but if you have someone that it has a good mindset and they understand like that that is a possibility to have like those little blips um, and they overcome that with oh well this is just a little blip it's going to go away and then I'm going to get back right on progress again those are the type of people that will, will see and succeed past uh, their own expectations they'll keep on uh, they'll keep on progressing because the body is pretty incredible about uh, being able to overcome that stuff if the mindset's there and then also uh, you know the, the work ethic is there to get that stuff done um, so definitely long game um, for some conditions. Obviously, you know we have those good cases where it's like pff, you fix them in one time and they never feel to get fail again. Um, to say that's uh, rare is maybe an understatement because it's not usually that easy. There's always going to be little flare ups and these things can come back. But uh, long game for sure. Um, Let's look into a little bit of like how to support these uh, these new things that, that you're trying to accomplish, these new activities that you're trying to accomplish. Uh, we are very, very big proponents of looking at the entirety of your body and looking at it as a, as a unit as opposed to little portions and little pieces. Uh, we gotta look at how it operates and how the systems all work together um, to fine tune stuff. So, um, when we're talking about maybe moving slow and moving through uh, like the beginning stages of your rehab, we want to look at movement quality. If, if there is something that uh, that doesn't look like it's actually moving right, uh, well, that needs to be coached. It needs to be identified so you get that strategy on how to move differently. So um, something that can support your progress to get back into swinging a golf club, running, is get it assessed, get those things uh, figured out to see if you're at, if your strategy that you're doing is. It's a good strategy. If it's a good strategy, then we can look at all the other stuff um, that, that goes along with tissue healing and stuff. But if you don't have a good idea of uh, movement quality and, and your ability to, to strategize through movement, um, definitely a good, good thing to get looked at. Yeah, and a lot of times too, if you're having soreness, discomfort, or anything while you're ramping up with an activity, um, it's important to check to make sure your technique is on fleek. So, for example, I have a, a guy who I'm basically taking through this process right now. He's had pain for a very long time, several years, and he was getting low back discomfort on step-ups. Why is it always step-ups? Why? But anyways, he had low back discomfort on step-ups. It was like, ah, should I stop doing this and not do this activity? And I said, well, hey, just let me show me how you're doing this move. And there were some technical things that I when we changed, he was able to actually do the step ups pain free and got way more out of it. And a lot of times if you give your body a different context to which to move under, um, that can help with soreness and discomfort and it can make this process go way easier. And that's why we perform a full movement evaluation on our people because if we can refine technique, a lot of times it, it increases this process in terms of how fast you get from point A to point B significantly. It's also why why we work next to a gym, because we can then kick that up a notch and have other ways of bridging the gap from the activity that we're starting with to what you want to get to. So yeah. it's important to emphasize the quality of your movement when you're, when you're doing this stuff. So, yeah. yeah, 
I mean, we're sticklers on movement, so um, it's it's true across you know the clinic side and to the coaches side. We're always trying to make sure our, our people that walk into Elevate understand their movement and they have a, a good knowledge based on how to move. Um, we can talk about uh, sleep and eat. We've talked about that before. We our, our ability to sleep is going to be uh, one of the biggest things that actually gets our tissues to be able to heal. Um, we've, if, if you look at any of our uh, doc talks, I feel like we've we've had a little bit of uh, a little bit of education on sleep uh, hygiene. Um, so if you have any questions on that, make sure to revert back to to some of the other ones to look for sleep hygiene. But uh, support of tissue uh, healing, one of the biggest things, probably the biggest thing. Um, we're looking at. Uh, just things that you can do, the basics that you can do is sleep. It, it, it's really trying to get your sleep under control. I think some of the, the biggest pain bouts that I've seen uh, patients have are flare-ups or any of that stuff. Uh, they have had big waves of their sleep. So they got four hours this night, three hours this night, then they got 10 hours, and then they had like all this stuff kind of going on. And then they had this really crappy day of, of pain. Um, so very, very important to be able to get your, your sleep and be able to get your tissues to feel less sensitive. Yeah, and it's probably the best anti-inflammatory that you can take is yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, a solid night of sleep. And there's actually, I mean, the research is astounding. I, I very rarely see this in research, but they say sleep disturbances or sleep issues have a causal role in pain. Yeah. Normally it's like, well, it correlates with this or that. Uh, no, this is causal. So if your sleep's not on point, uh, it can it can increase your risk of developing painful bouts or making this issue go on longer than it needs to. So we'll we'll link in the show notes the past doc talk. Oh yeah. Um, so that where we dive into sleep, I think you'll like it. Yeah, it's got some good. It's got some really good points on how to uh, routine your sleep, and that's very very important to sleep because it all goes on a, a a system and it needs to be very cyclical. Yeah, but but if you really like your dog, you got to be mindful too. Yeah, yeah. Well, Zeke still is in the bed, so yeah, he still he still gets to hang out with us overnight. But uh, eventually, we'll see it. <laughs> if my sleep ever gets uh, bad, which it hasn't yet, but it's just something to, to consider is not having the, the doggy in the in the bed as well. But comment below if you think by the end of the year, Kyle will or will not have Zeke be in the bed with him. <laughs> but it's tough though, I get it. It's like, oh, they're comfortable he's, to cuddle with. He's just the man. Yeah. He's, he's great. He's the man, yeah. Um, food. So uh, food is also another great way to keep inflammation down and help you recover. If This is always a joke that I go for, but if, if your diet consists of mac and cheese and gummy worms, uh, those are highly inflammatory foods and they're not going to give you all of the nutrients you need to recover from some type of physical activity, especially when you're ramping stuff up. Whereas things like vegetables, fruits, good proteins, all of this, that has all of the nutrients that your body needs and your tissues in your body needs to repair and recover from bouts of physical activity. So as best as you can, try to incorporate eating more whole foods. And a good rule of thumb, you know, there's a bazillion diets out there, but generally the fewer ingredients something has, the better. Which, if you shop in the fresh foods section, the ingredient list is very, very small because it's usually only one thing. Yeah. I'm thinking of body built by mac and cheese or body built by the veggies and lean meats. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty pretty easy to choose which one you want for yeah. your body. Uh, and I'm sure you can understand what body built by mac and cheese would probably look like if you just only ate mac and cheese and gummy worms. So, yeah. Um, I can't even read what that says. Recovery. Ah, <laughs> I recovery. Read, so. That's so. that's pretty important. Um, this kind of uh, goes into the, you know, if we have a bout of uh, intense movement load, we're starting to kind of ramp some stuff up again, how well can your body get from that bout to the next bout. Um, we don't want to stack things on top of each other if your body's actually not ready for it. Um, so um, increasing it, the recovery with sleep, eat, uh, hydration, um, trying to de-stress, all those things are gonna be very, very important to maximize recovery. Um, but it also has a lot to do with when you are returning to this activity and you really want to get to the golf course, 
You're not just gonna uh, do it every day until it's pain free. You're gonna have a, a day of golf. You know, you go through a few holes, maybe you know as little as three or four holes, and then you recover from that. You know, take maybe it takes three to four days, and then you do it again, and then you do it again, and then you do it again. That's how. Uh, recovery starts becoming less time because your body can get more efficient at uh, getting back to its activity um, and you start to see a little bit more gains and a little bit more progress with that because you're on the golf course more. So uh, maximize the recovery via nutrition, sleep, uh, hydration, de-stressing, uh, very important. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Good. So I think I think that's, that's it. That's all we got. Um, Should we check for questions? We're going to check for questions, comments, if you guys have them. You guys have like mm, 10 seconds to figure it out. He's going to log in. Boom. And he's going to see if there. there's any, uh, he's going to see if there's any comments. Um, if there is, make sure to shoot him out as quickly as possible. Ah, uh, you know what? It, I had to tune in the whole time, but I will check, Let's check real quick. We're going to check. If there is any nothing no comments no questions uh, if you guys have anything over the uh, course of the next couple of days let us know and uh, we'll get them answered and uh, we'll see you next week yeah or another edition indeed we will if you are one of these peeps who needs help ramping up your activity and you're like eh, yeah it's not, this sounds good I sound I like these principles but I might need a little bit of guidance don't hesitate to call us, 702-558-2151. We would be happy to help you get back on track uh, so you can get back to living life as opposed to trying to go through these highs and lows. So yeah, don't that's what we do. Call. That's what we do here. We try to you know, make those things possible for people that don't have that hope or they don't have that, uh, that understanding where they can't get there. So, Thanks, right. guys.